Hello. Hey, what up, town? We're live. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, what's cracking, bitch? Oh, <laughs> yeah, man, I had to, I had to respond, man. Uh, <laughs> Them idiots on you, man. I appreciate I never, it. Man, it was so. I never knew it was so many men that. Uh, I know. Sit down, man. I can't believe. I never knew. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll respond after you. I cannot believe so many men. Peace is sitting down. Came on your channel. Oh man, you should, you should, you should have pulled up. So let me get this straight. You want a a man? That have a lot to lose, including his reputation, lose his media credential, probably pretty much permanently, to start a fight with a professional boxer that would have went viral, that would have went everywhere, and both of, both of you guys would have came out looking horrible. That I'm talking about, I that would have ended up every, that when I say that would have ended up everywhere. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. you did what you were supposed to do. All I can say about Asia Boner. Uh, unfortunately, Fred, he got to understand, like, uh, new media is coming. And as I said before, he's going to start seeing more and more dudes that look more like me coming to these press conferences. Mm -hmm. and, and one day he don't say, say the wrong thing, and it might be a wrap for him. Because all I can say is if he end up in a... Uh, uh, Key Klaus uh, situation, you know, the dude who used to play for the Clippers who got to that fight outside, and I'm telling you, Keith right and yeah, and if he ends, ends up getting hurt, then his career is going to be <laughs> even more in the toilet than where it's headed right now. Mm -hmm. So I just think Adrian Boner need to chill. The man is 28 years old now. I agree. You know, man, you would, you would think a dude that had his father and his wife would would act a little bit better than that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this dude literally doesn't care what comes out of his mouth. This is the same dude that said, uh, I just whooped his ass like how they beat Martin Luther King. This nigga don't know the difference between Rodney King and Martin Luther King, and mm -hmm. that's sad right there. Mm -hmm. So, And from my knowledge, Martin Luther King and Rodney King are not related mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And I just really feel bad for Adrian Broder because of his behavior, man. It's just like he has some 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 bipolar tendencies. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, you just look at this dude like, wow. I mean, don't get me wrong, Adrian Broder is, is an interesting person. I mean, you will listen to see what he has to say, but the, the problem is, you wondering if he gonna say something intelligent or is he gonna say something stupid mm -hmm. so you can have something to criticize him about. And that's the problem with that with that dude. Yeah. This dude is approaching thirty now and it's just time to knock this shit off now. Yeah. You know? Why can't he be like Errol Spitz? Errol Spitz is a dude that gets it. Andrew Broner sit around being a fucking minstrel show. I mm -hmm. mean this dude was in a H uh uh HDM talks about I want to buy that shirt that say the coolest monkey around. No, how about you make a shirt that say the coolest nigga around? I mean, this dude just really don't seem to have a, a grasp on life. Mm. He really don't. He just seems like he don't get it sometimes. Mm. And I just wish his pops would step in and say, hey, man, it's time to step in. And he doesn't. And I know somebody going to say he a grown man, but it's like this. You never stop being a parent, mm -hmm. no matter what. You know what I'm saying? My son is 19, and I still have to guide him on certain things. He's going to be 20 this year. I still have the culture. You don't stop being a parent until they put you into, to, into the ground. And I think his father needs to pull him to the side and say, hey, man, enough of this, man. You're going to have to relax. Mm. So. You're right. I agree, man. He's, he's going to run into the wrong person, but the, I, I mean... I was sitting right, I was standing right in front of A.B. after he did the, the Leonard Ellaby stuff. I wanted, I, you know what the question I wanted to ask him? Why would you call him a punk-ass bitch in public for white people to see when you have his phone number? You understand? I, 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 I wanted to go there with A.B. I bit my tongue so hard because I, I honestly, I knew what he was up against. You know what I mean? I've been in a position where I needed a B in this class to be eligible to play basketball. I, so I'm, I'm not comparing apples and oranges. I'm talking about when my back was against the wall, like, I, I wanted people rooting for me. I don't want people that hey, you can't do this. You can't. You, you get what I'm saying? So I was that week up until the fight. I was I, 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 I wouldn't say I was PC with AB, but I didn't want him answering like challenging negative questions where he had to like question himself. 
You understand? Because I'm not afraid that. Obviously, by the end of it, you guys know I'm not afraid that to say what I believe. But I, I, I didn't want him on the defense because, you know, he was up against the wall for all intents and purposes. And everyone knew it. Everyone, even the fans knew it. Because when, when everyone was on their hands and knees, hands waiting for something positive to happen for AB and when it happened in the ninth round the fucking crowd erupted like like everyone was giving birth to a baby girl or something you know what I mean like it was just like it was like a pregnant pause for eight and a half rounds and then when the when he started landing those combinations everyone kind of relaxed and got excited got excited so man at the end of the day he's still not holding himself accountable you understand I mean you got to stop killing the help I don't care how you feel about Leonard Ellaby. Leonard Ellaby helped him this weekend. He promoted the fight. Adrian Broner didn't put up the $10 million to put on this card. You understand what I'm saying? AB Promotions didn't promote this fight. Mayweather Promotions, DeBella DeBella Entertainment, and Tom Brown promoted this fight. So at the end of the day, they they helped him. He didn't have to put no he didn't have the 10 the 5 to 10 million dollars to put up for this fight. Floyd Mayweather and them did. To, to pay for the camps, to pay the site fees. You understand the, about billions didn't do that. So at the end of the day, they helped them. You know? I understand, I understand everything that you're saying. The, the thing that bothers me, um, he, he, as I said, he doesn't do what everybody has been suggested that he does, which is let his hands go. Mm-hmm. I've seen... I seen he let his mouth go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah, need to yeah, let his yeah, mouth go. He need to let his hands go as much as he let his stopped, mouth go. If only, he would, if only he would let his hands go like how he let his mouth go. Man, Adrian Broder had a chance. Like Adrian Broder had a chance to possibly be the all-time great. He has the talent. He has the skills. But you just look at how he fights. He just lets fights get away from him. I've seen... Uh, parts in that fight where I think if he would have turned it on, he could have stopped Jesse Vargas. He hurt Jesse Vargas with some of those combinations. And then once again, he started dancing and started admiring. You know, I got to say this. I wish a lot of these uh, fighters, in particular the black fighters, would stop admiring and work so much. Like I told you that time, Fred, a lot of these fighters had a Bruce Le- Leroy syndrome. Mm-hmm. You know, they land a good punch and then they start looking at their hand like they got the glow and shit. Man, keep fucking punching. Mm-hmm. Stop like admiring yourself throwing punches. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to work in a street fight, man. Sometimes you got to treat a street fight like you do a professional fight. Keep throwing punches until t- you get that motherfucker out of there. Yep. Me and myself, I thought, I thought a draw was the right decision because I didn't see either man do anything to like basically secure that fight. People mm-hmm. got to understand just because a dude is throwing punches, but if he's not landing them uh, uh, effectively, then he still can like end up losing a fight or the fight becoming a draw. Sure. Adrian Broner looked it better throwing his punches. People got to understand when you, each judge have a criteria on how they score fights. Some judges go off punches thrown, activity, and just punches landed, period. Some judges go by what type of punches are thrown and how those punches are landed. If a dude is landing like 10 body shots at a time and then a guy is landing like five to six hard facial shots to where he's rocking a guy back, then... He's, in some in some cases, he's got to go for the dude that's throwing less punches but landing better punches. Sure. And that's why people, yeah, a lot of people don't understand how boxing works. It's not about how many punches you throw. It's about how you land those punches. Yeah. And it really comes down to what the judges is looking for. Yeah. And like I said, get back to A.B., what bothers me about AB, this guy sit up worrying about all kind of stupid shit like this dude participating in a fake beef with possibly the, the worst rapper that I've ever seen in my life because, by the way, that guy, Takashi 6 9 he sucks as a rapper. And to all the Takashi 6 9 fans, tell Takashi 6 9 to get a Fredro star his rap style back. Mm-hmm. He created a fake beef. I'm just tired of seeing this stuff. With Adrian Broner, this, this shenanigans, a is very popular. I think people would invite him to the talk shows and, and all that other shit. But it's just the way he behaves that a lot of people was just worried about what's going to come out of his mouth. He may, he may, and the funny thing is, to a certain degree, Adrian Broder make white people uncomfortable. So that's the funny part about it. They don't know what the hell that dude is going to say. Mm-hmm. And I 
think that's hurt him throughout his career is because of his post interviews or his pre interviews. Mm-hmm. What comes out his mouth? Adrian Broder is at a point where he should know what to say at this time. And then the thing is, Adrian Broder, he gets he think that you're supposed to be the yes man even when you don't work for him. He wanted you to say, hey man, I thought you wanted to fight. I thought it was a robbery. And you told him the absolute truth and he seen it had got upset with you. What would he rather you tell him the truth or lie to him? Which will make it worse if he sit up there and say, yeah, I thought you dominated when you really didn't. By you telling him that you thought it was a draw, maybe that'll help Adrian Broder if there's a rematch, him train harder and do the little things mm-hmm. that he need to do to win the fucking fight the next time around. I don't know what is so hard about this man comprehending something simple. How many times have we heard a boxer, trainer after trainer, uh, uh, blogger after blogger say, A.B. need to let his hands go. If everybody sees what the problem is with him, then why don't nobody else do it? I mean, why don't he do it? Mm. Why don't he know it? How many times we got to say, A.B., let your hands go. A.B., attack a little bit more. A.B., initiate offense a little bit more. He was walking Jesse Vargas down. Yeah. Jesse Vargas had a hard time trying to fight off the ropes, mm-hmm. which means he's not that good at it. Jesse Vargas isn't what you call Jesse Vargas don't have tremendous punching power. He couldn't hurt A.B. Uh, my chances, it's not like, look, it's not like A.B. was fighting Jared Hurd. I mean, for real. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's not like he was fighting fighting somebody like that. I would have kept I would have kept pressing Jesse Vargas and keeping him against the ropes and teeing off on him. And Adrian Broner, like I said, he got caught up in 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 in, in the in the in the, gla- in the glamour and the big lights. He ain't been on this stage before. Dude, take care of business, knock this motherfucker out, and move on to the next. Stop mm-hmm. fucking admiring your work, homie. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, uh, he's not an A level fighter at the end of the day, and and uh, man, I don't, I don't, man, I don't know, man. I, don't, I mean, think we, I, I think we all came to that. Really we, I, we, I, we, I, I'm, we almost out of words. How many more videos do I? I mean, we out of words, out of titles. You know, what I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have any recourse. I'm organically that dude that wants the betterment better for everybody, you know, and I purposely, you know how many chances I had to interview Adrian Broner this weekend? A hundred times. A hundred times. Like, I'm right, man, you have, you know how many times I had the opportunity to interview his whole team? A million times, because there's 40 of them. We all in the lobby all day together, all day. And, and I chose not to. I didn't want that energy on the line while he's preparing for it. Which was, I thought, a a career defining fight. You know, I mean, his back was against the wall. You know, so I I I chose to leave him alone. I re- I willingly chose to leave him alone. I could have made probably a thousand dollars off his videos this week. It, it, remember, I was there Wednesday. I, we stayed in the same hotel. I knew a room he was in. Everything. I could have Wednesday. I got Thursday, Friday. I could have put. I could have got so much footage of all them guys. The, the same guys that was that I was um, interviewing Saturday night, I had them all all week, but I I just chose not to, man. I you know because I know I was thinking that the IP address Google know where you are at all times, right? So they'll oh, yeah. yeah, so they'll they'll they probably would have made that video because I know all his team watches videos because I see them on their phone all the time. You know they were all on their phone watching Instagram and watching YouTube videos, and actually. Truth be told, it was a guy Saturday night watching my videos in front of me and didn't know I was behind him watching him watch my videos. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so and then I told him, I said, hey, you watching my videos? He said, oh, that's you? <laughs> yeah, man. So at the end of the day, man, I'm, I'm glad it was a draw. I was rooting for him to win. Uh, it felt like a draw to me. You know what I mean? I watched, the energy of the fight felt like a draw. I didn't. I didn't watch the twelfth round because Chino Maidana walked right by me. He left at the at the end of the eleventh round, so I just started recording Chino Maidana, trying to get a reaction from him. So I missed the twelfth round. So um, outside of that, I'm gonna rewatch it at some point. I'm not really really excited to. I mean, I don't. I, I do want to listen to Kevin Cunningham in the corner. That's what I do want to do. 
you know, so. Uh, the most interesting, interesting in talking to is his father. His what? And I would just, I would like to talk to his father because somebody need to have Did you watch the interview I did with him? I didn't get, get a chance because okay. you know, okay. you know how, how I'll be ripping and running. You uh-huh. know how I'll be on the go and shit. Uh-huh. But when you get a chance, it's gonna it's it's gonna tell you a lot about it's it's gonna tell you a lot about it if you know read between the lines and stuff like that and what he's trying to say. Yeah, I know that. I know that. um, I just would like to ask his father, man, how do you feel when you see your son say some of the stuff that he says? Mm Because at the end of the day, people look at you too. Yeah, they look at you and be like, "Hey, you raised this guy, man," and. To, to a certain degree, you have to take responsibility for this too. You have to look at yourself and be like, "Hey, man, where did I feel that <laughs> with him?" Sure. Because you just have to, you just have to ask that question. I, and I know he probably don't like people asking him those questions, but mm-hmm. you have to ask him because, hey, you're part of the entourage. Yeah. And sorry, you're right. You know, you're his, you're his father, so. They're going to ask you, how did this happen with him? Mm-hmm. Why is he doing this? You already know with black men, whatever a black dude does, whether it's positive or negative, they look at the parents. They look at the background, especially with us. And if, the, and if his father is around and he still behaves in an un, uh, un, let's just say an un they're gonna still try to put this on on the father. See, black men when they have to, you know, his father was in and out of. I mean, you know, you know how this story, you know how it works. So that's what I'm saying. I would like to talk to his dad, mm. and I'm talking about talk to him off camera before I put him on camera, or talk to him on camera and then talk to him off camera. Because to a certain degree, like I said before, I got to keep it one hundred. I would be embarrassed. If I saw my son conducting himself like that, mm-hmm. I'm sorry because you know he is a reflection of you. You know what I'm saying his D his his DNA is attached to your DNA, mm. so that is a reflection of you. You already know, Fred, that odds are stacked against black men as father fathers anyway. Mm-hmm. So no matter what, not, no, no matter what my son does, somehow, some way, they still gonna put this back, put this on me mm-hmm. or they still gonna look into what what happened with me mm-hmm. you know so and that's you know whether we like it or not the odds are stacked against us and people can sit up here and say that isn't the case all they want but anybody that believed that it ain't tougher being a black father in america they are fucking lie mm-hmm. and they, they i'm sorry and i'll tell any and i'll tell any coon or any house nigga to their face if they mm-hmm. truly believe that then something is seriously wrong with you you're just a fucking liar mm-hmm you're right. Everything you're saying is real. And, um, I mean, we'll wait till he lives to fight another day, uh, which is great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad, but, um, what's next? I, I don't know what's next and I'll just wait. I'm not, I'm not even interested in trying to predict what happens next. With Adrian, you know what I mean? I'm just not. You, you know, the problem is you wonder like, damn, why can't Adrian Broner beat these type of fighters? Mm-hmm. You just now look. Jesse Vargas is a good fighter, but let's not make it look like this dude is headed, you know, to the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. Like, let's not make him look like you, you know he's somebody like Ricardo Lopez or or some other guys. You know, let's not put him in the same category of those dudes. Mm-hmm. He's just a guy that does things a little bit above average, and. Guys like Adrian Broner should have a field day of him because his skill set is far superior. Mm -hmm. You know, I've said this before, and I just, I have to say this. I just feel like a lot of times that these black fighters just don't fight with enough integrity. They don't realize what's at stake when they fight certain fighters. And it just got to be said. A lot of these brothers, they just don't fight with no 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 pride. Mm. They just don't fight. They don't see the big picture, man. A lot is a lot is on the line when you fight. When you go into a ring, you're not fighting just for yourself. You fight for you fight for for your race. You fighting for your kids. You fight, and I just don't see that with a lot of fighters. It's in particularly black fighters. 
And I'm not worried about nobody saying this has nothing to do with race because if anybody believed that, they are fucking lied to because boxing is one of the most racially influenced sports out there, if not the most racially influenced sport out there. This mm. boxing is truly, <laughs> to a certain degree, about race. Yeah, and, and and people don't don't want to see it because you see the double standards, you see the shit that go on with Triple G. You know, and I'm saying him getting a pass for fighting a nobody because, like I said before, Led Floyd Mayweather had fought a dude that hadn't fought in two years. People would have said this is an outrage. They would have called it a cherry pick, mm-hmm. and the, yeah. And the people that say they wouldn't have had a problem with this, they a fucking lie. Yeah, you're right. Floyd fought. Floyd fought some of the best fighters that, that was out there. Yeah. And people found a way to criticize him. But let it, like I said, I remember when they was putting out reports that Floyd was considering fighting Eric Morales, which turned out not to be true. I mean, people were getting on YouTube going going nuts. Mm. I mean, so I don't want to hear this shit. You mm. fighting a dude that haven't fought in two years, mm. and you got these idiots on here trying to sit up here and insult our intelligence by trying to get us to believe this is a legitimate fight. Tom Waffler is a liar. Triple G is a liar, and Abel Sanchez is a liar mm. because they cannot sit up here with a straight face and tell an intelligent, a real boxing fan that this is a legitimate fight. You're right, and I don't want to hear nothing about Triple G fighting for belts and none of that stuff. He is completely exposed. This dude is still willing to put his career on, on, you know, on hold for a Canelo fight. So he not willing, he not willing to fight any of these young guys out here. Now, Chalo, Chalo is a mandatory son is, is is a mandatory, but you haven't heard any signs that he will fight Chalo next or Billy Joe Saunders next. There's still talk of him fight Canelo, which by the way, a, a second fight with Canelo is going to take. Yeah. Why well, waste your time even fighting Canelo when this fight is going to be a financial disaster? Yeah, they're not. Nobody's going to buy tickets to this fight. Nobody's going to watch this fight because yeah. of. And then some of the shit that's going on with Golden Boy and just Triple G himself. People see Triple G for who he is now. He's a complete fraud. I told people about this dude. I, I warned everybody. When real competition came to 160, this was going to happen. That we'll fight anybody was a lie because they're not willing to fight anybody. Mm. People are actually getting mad at me and you and other people who are suggesting that he fight a credi- more credible opponent. Sick. They keep saying, what has Demetrius Andre and Chalo done to deserve a fight with with Triple G, okay, what has this motherfucker that ain't even a real, a, a real uh, uh, 160 guy, what, what has he done? Mm. Except sit on his ass for two years and he lost his last fight. And you get these idiots that come on here, see, the, the new go-to move, as I said before, is, oh, we just hate Triple D because he's not black. No, I would have a problem with anybody that, that did some shit like this. Now, the funny part about it is we're criticizing Anthony Joshua. Last time I checked, Anthony Joshua was black. We criticized Keith Thurman for the way he's acted towards Errol Spence. Last time I checked, Keith Thurman was black. Mm. So how the fuck are we giving uh, black fighters a, a pass? People love to put these these uh, imaginary labels on guys like me and you just so they can try to you know validate their fake talking points. Triple G is a fraud. He's overrated. He's been overrated. He will always be overrated. If Triple G was to win this fight, and let's just say he beats Canelo and then he retires, that will show you that Triple G was never about legacy. He just like the rest of these motherfuckers. He looked for a big day, and he got the hell out of boxing. Mm-hmm. And everybody accused Floyd Mayweather so-called, quote-unquote, trying to protect his own. Well, what the fuck you think Triple G is trying to do? Mm-hmm. Big time. Because like I said before, I don't want to hear this shit about, oh, well, Triple G is 36, and he's earned the right not to fight Chalo. Well, based off what? Floyd was 36 when he fought Canelo. Mm. People were saying, I remember people were saying, well, Floyd will never go near Canelo. He don't want none of that. Well, Floyd made the fight, and he beat Canelo from pillar to post. 
So <laughs> then you had the, oh, well, he's not. Well, he wasn't ready. Well, wait a minute. Y'all said he should fight him. Yep. So I, I don't understand that. So how is Triple G's 36 too old, but Floyd wasn't? Mm-hmm. First of all, if you look at who Triple G didn't fought in his career, he should be lining up to fight a guy like Chalo. He should be lining up to fight a Demetrius Andre. Abel Sanchez was the one that's been telling us for the last uh, four years, nobody goes 12 rounds with Triple G. The longest you're going to last is eight rounds. Yeah, and, and This is the this is the image they tried to sell us. So this is why I don't understand when Abel Sanchez and Tom Lawler get mad at it. And other people were questioning some of the things that come out their mouth. That, that's why I didn't understand Abel Sanchez getting mad at you to him about some comments about uh, black fighters not being able to sell. When you look at some of the, when you look at the top highest grossing fights, they all included some kind, some, some, some black fighter. Mm-hmm. So how could that not be be true? And then, of course, when you called him on it. He make it look like you was attacking him, but he attacked a whole group of fighters. He attacked black people and fighters as a whole. Mm-hmm. And he, so you putting words in my mouth. No, you said it. Everybody heard you say it. And he didn't want to take accountability for what he said. And then, of course, the idiots tried to put this on us. Then you had some of these motherfuckers who said that it was true. And then we asked him to prove, well, how is it true? You know what I'm saying? How is it true mm-hmm. to put up the numbers? Yeah. We have the numbers. Oh. So it wasn't true. It wasn't even re- remotely true. Mm. And what, what I don't understand, and then you make a video, you make a video on Saturday proving once again that people will come out to see black fighters. And of course, you had a couple of coons coming on here saying, well, you should say shit, oh yeah, to the coons that be coming on our channels talking that, that shit, fuck you niggas. Yeah, fuck Fuck out of here with that shit, man. <laughs> Go coons somewhere else, man. Real talk, man. Because like, like, like with us, we keeping it real, we keeping it 100, man. And that, that's the problem, that, that's the problem. If you don't have, if you don't have fake ass boxing fans, so that secretly, uh, white supremacists trying to silence us, you have the coons trying to silence us. You know what I'm saying? Because it's too many. It's too many uh, internet Stephen A. Smiths walking around. So I just want to make that very clear. You can't silence us. We will not be silenced. It's only going to get. It's only going to get worse. Oh yeah. Oh it's, no, not worse. No, let's change it the other way around. We're only going to get louder. Yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, it's the reason why I uh, particularly want to go to uh, Crawford Horn. As I said before, um, you, <laughs> I expect Stephen A. Smith to be there. Oh, he's on. The, he might. He might be doing the fight. Good. So that'll give me a chance to confront him mm-hmm. because I need to ex- him to explain to me. This is the so-called black man that's always trying to tell us black men how we supposed to behave, and we need to have, and you know, we we need to have integrity. And ESPN is a network of integrity, and they don't tolerate they don't tolerate anybody's BS. But yet they just re up they deal with Oscar De La Hoya. They don't want to have nothing to do with Al Heyman, but they want to put those lousy goals and golden boy fights. On ESPN as doing doing shit ratings, and we already know Oscar's history. We know his history. We know what's going on. So let me get this straight: if you a black dude that do something that's deemed uh, not cool or you know uh, despicable, hey, ESPN is gonna put you on blast. But if you are a coke sniffing, cross dresser, uh, weirdo, then it's cool. Yeah. And I'm going to have to ask Stephen A. Smith to explain that. Because ESPN seemed to be uh, very inconsistent on who they go after. Oh, for facts. He, he's so, he's so, God, oh, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, man. He's, oh, yeah, wow. So. And, and the sad part about it is with Stephen A. Smith, I I seen him transform into the despicable, gutless person that he is, just 
over like a 15 year period because as I said before he wasn't like that at first mm-hmm. he was a dude who respected to the fullest when he first came about this was oh, he was, oh he was so black oh he was so black yeah and then all of a sudden the attendance I, to, I just got the email on the attendance oh well I just looked at it 13,964 oh okay cool yeah you so know, that means it's that means it's about fifteen thousand people in the in the arena, because you always yeah. put a th- you always put a thousand more on the workers and everyone else. So it's about fifteen thousand people that watch the fight. And the stadium hold what nineteen thousand? I don't know how many it holds, but well, people got to understand. Uh, people got to understand that's that's very good for an event because at the end of the day, all it's about is being profitable. So people made money. <laughs> money was made. That's all that matters mm-hmm. in the scheme of things. Mm-hmm. Money got made. Yeah, money got made. You're right. Because I'm telling you right now, from what I'm seeing, that's going on with Crawford Horn. That's on pace to be a, a disaster. I, I feel it's going to be a disaster. Because you know why? Every day they need to have content out. <laughs> Every day they need to have they ain't got they ain't got nothing pumping so anyways I I want Crawford to do well I'm a fan of Crawford you know uh, this will be the toughest fight he's had since the first since the early rounds of Gamboa uh, you know so we just got to sit back and you know I think this is this is gonna be a physically tough fight for him you know I don't know how long it lasts but I, but I think just Jeff Jeff Horn is not going out there and getting knocked out in the first round. And, and and matter of fact, Terrence Crawford doesn't even start off a fight like like that to knock you out in the first round. He may send messages, but I don't I don't I don't think he goes into a to a fight. He figures you out like Floyd figures you out, and then he has the option either box you for twelve rounds or break you down or or really put the pedal to the metal and and try and stop you. So that's always been his options in all of the last ten of his fights. So we'll see, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I'll, I'll be there. I just think this is everybody keep thinking that he's gonna blow through Jeff Horn, mm-hmm. and they're sadly mistaken. Mm-hmm. See, this is the fight he needs to get him prepared for a future fight with Errol Spence. Sure, now, don't sure. get me wrong; I'm not putting Errol Spence in the same category with Jeff Horn, but we know Errol Spence is a very big and physical and tough mm-hmm. fighter. Straight. So this, yeah. how Terrence Crawford performs in the early round, and how he handles the adversity of Jeff Horn always being up on him and pushing up on him will show you how he'll fare against a guy like um, Errol Spence. We mm-hmm. already know the fight shouldn't happen next because this is his debut at 140. Mm-hmm. We already know Errol Spence is at least three to four fights away. Yeah, you know, hopefully, hopefully, Terrence Crawford stays active after this fight. You know, Terrence Crawford is what 20, 28 now, so he's he's still he needs to stay busy. Mm-hmm. You're right. So. He needs to stay busy. He needs to keep fighting. But the problem is, as I keep saying, what happens next? Yeah. Okay, where does he go after this this fight? Who is there for him to fight? Pacquiao mm-hmm. has made it clear he doesn't want to fight Terrence Crawford. Mm-hmm. So who else is out there for Terrence Crawford? Is he going to go back down? I don't think Terrence Crawford is going to go back down, go back down to 140, even though there were well, a lot of fights for him. Every 140, 140. Se- I mean, to, to, to answer your question... And just flatline it. Manny Pacquiao didn't have an opponent to fight, so he created his own promotion and convinced Lucas Matisse for a bum fight. Jesse Vargas uh, went exile. Timothy Bra- Timothy Bradley retired. And, you know what I mean? So, and realistically, I, I always he has no one to fight at one forty seven. What he's gonna what he's gonna do? Com- put Mike Alvarado on the undercard. Put him up against a guy he can knock out and say he's going to fight him. Does he fight Benavidez? You understand? It's, it's not much for him over there on that side of the fence. But he, he has to put himself in a position where there's where the ground swell is so big that in a year they have no choice but to make Earl Spence Terrence Crawford. Similar to Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, there's it, it's no way you can't make this fight. You know, so. That's it, man. I gotta go to work. <laughs> I gotta go to work, man. I gotta go to work. <laughs> okay, man. <laughs> but uh, I, I appreciate you. We probably can. No problem. Do y'all, some... y'all know where to find me, Tail Business JS or Tail Business Sports Sports and Media. We gotta do so, that shit at the beginning of the video. Out. 
You gotta do that shit at the beginning of the video because some people don't watch the entire entire thing. Oh, they're watching. Oh, <laughs> it's me. So I don't, they're I don't. watching. Okay. It's me. All right, I right, appreciate. Man. All right, I'm going to work. All right, peace. Thanks, Tom. And now to do it. <laughs>